Welcome back. It's day 313. I crushed a men's health one a day vitamin pill for adults in one liter of water. These are the vitamin pills that I normally take. And I'm stirring it with a metal chopstick in my red metal watering pail. And I'm essentially fertilizing from the bottom. This should provide all the micronutrients my plants need. But if I had to do this all over again, I'd do it from the top because as I water from the top, the nutrients can travel downwards. Um, putting in the tray means you need roots in there to get at the nutrients. So on day 318, I put half a packet of miracle Grow Singles in the same metal watering can with another liter of water to dissolve it. And this should provide all the macronutrients that the plant needs. Uh, the nitrogen compounds, phosphorus compounds, and potassium compounds in usable forms. You can't just put it in elemental. It would wreck everything. So I'm watering away from the plant on the top in hopes that I don't want to burn the leaves or the roots by direct contact with concentrated fertilizer. And I sprayed some distilled water all over tops and sides to try to wash off anything that might have splashed on the leaves. This is macro footage of the plant up close. So it's lonely in this pot. It's just this one plant and I had many seeds to begin with but as with many plant growing series I end up with one you know through attrition or just one that germinated and you can see the teeth on the sides. Uh, the ends are burned but that's okay because uh, most desert plants end up with burned leaf ends where their spike is. It has a really high surface area to volume ratio. So it probably just dries out. So it's day 321. Macro footage of these leaves again. A few days later, modeled with the white spots. In case you've never looked at century plant leaves up close. Although the adults, the mature plants look quite different from this but you probably won't find footage like this anywhere else you know you'll just find something granny on the web so why not show you what it looks like when they're young it's day 338 I'm watering from the top away from the plant again in hopes of the plant sending out uh, roots you know adventitious shoots etc so on day 350 I added one low dose 81 milligram tablet that's dissolvable of aspirin. I had heard about aspirin watering and how contact with the leaves with the appropriate concentration of aspirin water will boost plant immunity and make them grow faster. So this was my phase during 2016 together with the avocado navel orange seed where I was basically doing this to all my plants so this isn't some kind of special treatment for just a century plant it's just along for the ride um, my initial century plant episodes were very short and I didn't put that much effort into them and I don't know either it's that or people don't really want to watch um, videos on succulents but later on I had an episode the one right before this it covers days 100 something to 300 07, you know, 111 to 307, I think it was. And that one got a decent amount of viewership. Um, I made it a much longer episode, uh, 12 minutes, I think. And it got 800 views over eight months, which is not good compared to my other series. But it's a definite spike in interest um, just due to the higher quality of the video compared to the very early episodes. So it seems like uh, viewership will pick up a little bit and some people have commented that they want to see more episodes or they just commented on the Century Plant series in general in 2017. So I think people want to see more of this. Uh, day 391. So I've been flood watering from the top a lot and I don't really have a fear of root rot. Um, I guess part of that is I'm not really afraid of losing this plant because if I do, you know, not a relatively high number of people are watching it anyway. So, you know, it's not a huge loss. So I'm just kind of hoping that this plant 
starts to grow faster and I'm not really concerned about root rot. It seems like once plants get to this phase, they've been alive for a while, um, past the early seedling phase, they're no longer afraid of root rot. So your problem might be underwatering rather than overwatering. And all this fear of overwatering came from a phase uh, much earlier than this where you know I lost a lot of plants due to overwatering. I think that was 2015. You know, the Joshua tree seedlings uh, all died and whatnot. So it's day 413. And as I stated, uh, underwatering was probably the bigger problem in the past and overwatering. But with just an N of 1, I only have one sample here. I don't really know uh, the water tolerance of this plant. But I would think most uh, succulents like this that have fat, juicy leaves... Um, they just like to store a lot of water and use it at their leisure and I can't imagine that uh, well maybe they just don't encounter overwatering in their natural environment but you never know I mean there could be a, a little microclimate where you know at the base of a rocky mountain or whatever it just gets a lot of water and you might actually have to contend with a lot of water under the ground so today 445 slow growth during winter so this episode spans uh, fall and winter pretty much and there's just not enough growth in my opinion because there's not enough sunlight although the beginning is probably just very slow in general for this plant like it was for the joshua tree so if i had um you know a townhouse or a house or whatever with a, a balcony or a yard that got morning sun too and didn't have to wait until early afternoon to start getting sun then I would have a much bigger plant by now but you know you have what you have you can't change that and uh, my balcony can't just magically protrude out and have no overhang so you know now I'm spraying the leaves because I like to clean the leaves off uh, they get dusty especially when I do work on the balcony with dirt you know it just lands on everything um, static and whatnot so you can see there's a little leaf um you know on the bottom that was uh, one of the first few leaves and it just got obscured and the plant sort of grew downwards so I'll talk more about later but yeah so i started watering more like this and you know i'm not really afraid of disturbing anything in the pot but at the same time it kind of annoyed me early on in this growing series to water directly on the plant because uh all these dirt particles, uh, vermiculite and whatnot, would just get wedged between the leaves. So it's day 562, and as I said, over time, the plant got deeper. And I think the first two leaves um, are obscured or dead. Uh, I think there's one that you can see underneath uh, the biggest leaf. But I got this new plastic showering can, and it's been great. And I can just water like this, and it doesn't disturb all the soil. So that removes all the annoyance of all these uh, potting mix particles just kind of moving around and getting into everything. But I think watering like this about once a week is good enough for these succulents or the Joshua tree. Basically, you want the soil wet but um, not soaking wet. And you don't want the bottom watering tray to be constantly flooded either. That's just my opinion. So you can see this thing is really green and dark now. The leaves are actually significantly bigger and more in number than they were in the beginning of this episode. So there's been a fair bit of progress. The teeth actually have colors to them. You know, they're an interesting red, um, sort of a maybe dark reddish brown um, on the tips and yellow at the base. So it adds a lot of character to that. Um, they look different than they were earlier on in this episode or compared to the previous episodes the starter episodes so um yeah it's uh really come a long way it's day 570 i'm looking forward to the day where this plant will take up the entire pot or most of it and have runners going out and colonizing all the remaining empty space available real estate that's kind of lonely and boring for the time being but It'll take a long time before this thing can 
even approach the appearance of what I see in landscaping projects. I read that it takes 25 years for this thing to reach maturity on average. It doesn't take 100, um, despite the name. So by then it will send out a huge showy inflorescence that can reach you know, 10, maybe even 15 meters high in some specimens and have all sorts of pollinating insects buzzing around the top. You know, it's a big show for a few weeks before everything withers away and it makes seeds. But it will reproduce largely by vegetative growth. By cloning itself, it sends out runners, adventitious shoots, to, um, you know, make new shoots uh, elsewhere. And after the main plant dies, um, that's how it carries on the entire cycle for another 25 years. So thanks for watching, and it'll be a very long time until the next episode, so stay tuned to the rest of my channel.